Hello, this is Ann Mullen from Cycle Technologies, here to talk about a new family planning method called Dynamic Optimal Timing, or DOT for short. I am with Leslie Heyer, President and Founder of Cycle Technologies, and joining us is Colin Smith, an expert in biomedical informatics. Hello, Leslie. Hello, Colin. Hi, Ann. Hello. Uh, Leslie and Colin, you two are two of the developers of DOT, so I wanted to take an opportunity to discuss with both of you the background and the basis for this new method. Uh, well, first of all, before we get into the science behind DOT, uh, Leslie, would you mind briefly describing what kind of a method this is? Sure. Uh, so dynamic optimal timing, or DOT, is a patent-pending, fertility awareness-based family planning method. It's based on a woman's period start dates and uses the established science behind reproductive biology and a dynamic, sophisticated algorithm to determine when an individual woman can become pregnant. A woman can access this method through her smartphone and she can use it for birth control or to plan a pregnancy or just for informational purposes. The thing that's really unique about DOT is that it uses only period start dates, though, to do the calculations. So uh, DOT is based on period tracking. Uh, here we have listed the basic features of DOT. Uh, Leslie, again, would you mind giving us a quick overview of the benefits and the features? Sure. Uh, well, first, as I said, a woman can access this method through her smartphone. Uh, currently, the DOT app is available for iPhone, and we will have an Android version out later this year. And the way it works is really very easy. Uh, you simply enter your period start date, and then the app will calculate your risk of pregnancy for each day of your cycle using a complex algorithm. And it shows you each day when your pregnancy risk is, is high or if it's medium or low. So that's it as far as the basic functioning. So it is very user-friendly. Yes, it's meant to be very user-friendly. And other things to know about DOT or other benefits, um, I think one of the big ones is it works for almost all women. Right. So as it says here, uh, it works for women whose cycles fall into the range of 20 to 40 days, which is almost all women. It's also designed to be very accurate and effective. And since it's a fertility awareness method, it's natural and has no side effects. And also, uh, the app is available for free. For free, and free is good. Yes. Uh -huh. So the method seems easy, and the way the app works is so simple, a person might ask herself, how can this be so simple and actually work as birth control or for planning a pregnancy? Uh, so that's what I wanted to talk to uh, the both of you about. Um, Leslie, so as far as background on DOT, could you explain to us, you know, what was your inspiration or why did you feel that there was a need for a new family planning method? Well, first I would say it, it was not just a one-time aha moment uh, so much as it was an evolution of our work for the past 13 years working in reproductive health. Specifically, Cycle Technologies has worked with different fertility awareness methods and there's been a lot of interest from women from all over the world for these methods. There's especially been interest in one method in particular called the standard days method, uh, which can be used with a tool called Cycle Beats. Mm -hmm. And we've worked with this method and Cycle Beats for many, many years. And really, it's the only method prior to DOT that's based on just a woman's period start dates. And it's been used by millions of women in all parts of the world. Uh, so we know there's a lot of interest in a family planning option like this. But that method is based on a fixed window, and it's limited to women who have cycles that are in a certain range. And so we were often being asked if we could change the range and make it accommodating for someone who has perhaps shorter cycles or longer cycles or has a bit more variation. So we knew from that kind of feedback and hearing women's experiences with this method and also from the research and looking at, at cycle information that was out there, that there were many uh, women who cycles were falling outside that range, who we wanted to be able to help. And so what you're saying uh, cycle beads is a great method, but not everyone can use it. Right. So cycle beads, it's a fixed tool, and it's designed for women whose cycles do fall into a certain range. And we thought that given the advances in technology, and specifically in the increase in smartphone use, that there was an opportunity to create a new family planning method 
that relied only on a woman's period start dates and could be more dynamic. We were really interested in creating something that could be used by more women, uh, could be more effective, and could tailor to a woman's individual cycle length. So how did you go about making this happen? So we thought this was a really cool idea, but we weren't sure what was possible. Uh, we talked to a number of data scientists and reproductive health experts, and through initial analysis, determined that it did indeed look to be possible. Uh, Colin, with whom we've worked in the past on some of our work with the standard days method, uh, was, was heavily involved in, in much of that process. And like I said, in talking with all of these experts, we determined that it was possible to create a method based solely on a woman's period start dates, which would be highly effective, would work for almost all women, and could also tailor to a woman's individual cycle data. Uh, it also became clear in this process that a specific statistical approach, which Colin can better explain, was going to be key. Okay, so Colin, let's talk about the approach that Leslie just mentioned. Uh, how did you go about solving uh, this problem of a new method? Yeah, so there are really many factors that affect whether a woman will conceive or not. And all of those things mean you can't know for certain on any given day whether pregnancy is likely. And uh, there's a particular part of statistics called Bayesian statistics, uh, which is really one of the best methods for making predictions about these kinds of uncertain events. And one of the really powerful parts of Bayesian statistics is that it can combine prior knowledge with knowledge that you gain on the fly. And for fertility prediction, there's really a wealth of data that we have from other women that helps us to make very accurate predictions. And with this Bayesian approach, we can combine that information uh, with a particular woman's cycle history to make the best possible predictions that are customized just for her. So, Colin, I know that the intent for this new method was to make it as simple and user-friendly as possible so that she only has to enter her uh, period start dates and also be accurate as birth control. Uh, could you talk specifically about how just period start dates can be used you know, to come up with predicting fertile times and uh, future period dates? Yeah, so uh, let's say you have a woman that has recorded a 29-day cycle and say a 28-day cycle and a 31-day cycle. Now, using this information and the cycle data from many other women, we first determine how likely her next cycle is to be, say, 30 days, 28 days, or really any other length. And this information allows us to predict when a woman is most likely to have her period next month or even, say, six months from now. And once we know how long her cycles might be, we can then figure out how likely she is to ovulate on any given day, again, using, this informa using information from other women. Uh, and finally, knowing when she might ovulate, we can then predict how likely she is to get pregnant during every day of her cycle. And this can be used to either plan or prevent pregnancy in a way that's really specifically tailored for each particular woman. Well, it sounds like the Bayesian approach is a powerful one um, and also a complex one for making these predictions. Uh, is that how you would uh, characterize uh, the approach? Yeah, I would say uh, that the ideas behind the Bayesian approach are really, really simple and elegant. Um, but when it comes down to it, implementing an algorithm based on these ideas can be uh, somewhat complex. And getting all the details right takes a lot of careful work. And so in developing the method, we put a lot of work into constructing statistical models using recent findings in reproductive health. And we also analyzed how well that would work for women who are part of large-scale reproductive health studies from places like the World Health Organization and others. Uh, so, Colin, thank you for describing the Bayesian approach that you've used to uh, develop this method. I wanted to ask some questions about then determining pregnancy risk. Uh, one of the facts we know about reproductive biology is that there is a six-day period of time each cycle when a woman could become pregnant and the Bayesian approach that you've just described uh, estimates a potential fertile time of more than six days each cycle. So um, someone using this new method would see a result of more than six days. Could you explain uh, why that is? Yeah, well, like I mentioned before, that starts with expected lengths of a particular woman's cycle. 
And now once you know these lengths, you can say roughly when ovulation would occur, but you can't be totally precise about it. And because of that uncertainty, and to make sure the method is safe for as many women as possible, you have to make the, women, the window just a little bit wider. And now this window does get narrowed as Dot learns more and more about a particular woman's cycle. But you never really get down to the level of six days, even for women with very regular cycles. Mm -hmm. Well, that's, that's interesting, but you can uh, still make it accurate. Uh, Leslie, so after all this analysis was done that Collins described, uh, how did you go about turning it into a practical family planning method? Well, as, as Colin described, after we figured out the best approach and could accurately determine conception risk, we knew we had to make that information usable. Uh, we had a really accurate way of understanding conception risk, but then you had to take into account the fact that people don't always look at risk the same way. One person may see 5% risk and think, great, it's only 5%, and another person may see 1% and think, oh no, that's really risky. Um, so we needed to give people that information in a way that they could effectively use it for family planning. So we did a lot of analysis to determine how to flag days as high, medium, and low in terms of a woman's conception risk. And then we took a number of factors into consideration that can change based on everything from the amount of history that we have for her in terms of her cycle lengths, her particular cycle characteristics, or how she's even using this method, whether she's using it to prevent pregnancy or to plan a pregnancy. So we can flag her a little bit differently based on all of that information. Uh, so Colin, um, and Leslie's kind of described how to turn it into a practical method. Were there other considerations that you had to uh, take to make this a usable method? Yeah, well, I think one of the really key advances we're trying to make in going from something like cycle beads to dot is that we want to be much more inclusive and enable many more women to take advantage of the method. And one of the things we had to be really careful of in doing that was that we didn't sacrifice efficacy. So we looked at many different kinds of women, including those with uh, long cycles or short cycles or those with very irregular periods to make sure that the efficacy would be consistent among each of those different kinds of women. Right. I'm glad you mentioned the efficacy because, of course, if methods are not effective, uh, it's not desirable. So that's definitely a good point. Uh, Colin, you mentioned when you were talking about the data when you were analyzing DOT that it would work for women who were involved in uh, fertility studies. Could you say something about what kind of data that was that you used? Yeah, well, like I mentioned before, we used uh, large-scale data sets that were provided by the World Health Organization which really gave a lot of great detail about women's cycle information. And we also cross-referenced the analysis with data sets from first fertility studies here in the U.S. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So uh, to be clear then, with that data and the algorithm, uh, this method is accurate in identifying potential fertile days without using other fertility signs or symptoms, correct? Yeah, yeah, that's exactly correct. As we've been saying, the great thing about this approach is that it can be done accurately using only period cycle start dates. Okay, so uh, I'd like to go on and talk about Dot the app. Uh, so you were at the point where you had the complex algorithm, uh, the rich data sets, and uh, the method that you developed, and all of which had to be uh, conveyed through a user-friendly app. Leslie. How did you take all this, and how did you want the app to work? Well, we really wanted a woman to be able to simply open up the app, enter her period start date, and right there the app would show her her pregnancy risk for that day. So she'd know if she was at high risk or low risk for pregnancy. It was really that simple. Uh, the app itself would have calculated her conception risks for each day of her cycle using the algorithm that Colin was describing. Um, and again, after a woman enters her period start date, she would see her pregnancy risk as high, medium, or low. And then the app would actually reinforce this message with symbols and with a color-coded background, so making it really intuitive and easy to understand. And uh, as Colin was describing, a woman would then just be adding new period start date dates uh, each cycle. Right, so over time, as the app collects dates, it would continue uh, to perform these calculations and behind the scenes and provide the user with her pregnancy risk information 
which would become more and more tailored to her as she enters additional cycle dates. Mm -hmm. I see. Yeah, exactly. Oh, and a, an important point that I would add is that the app can be used by women who have variable cycles. Right, yes, yeah, so uh, that's a good point. DOT works for women, again, with short cycles or long cycles, and generally almost all women whose cycles are in the 20 to 40 day range. Mm -hmm. Uh, now, there are many, many period tracking and fertility apps already out there. Uh, Leslie, how is DOT different from the other period tracking apps? That's a really good question. Uh, DOT is the only period tracking app that should be used for pregnancy prevention. Other period tracking apps are using back of the envelope calculations. Uh, when you're trying to prevent pregnancy, that is just not going to be sufficient. It's really just not accurate enough. Uh, so DOT is the only period tracking app that can help women, regardless of their cycle lengths, effectively prevent or plan a pregnancy. Okay, okay. well, thank you for describing how the app is uh, unique in the, the field of uh, period tracking apps. So I'd also like to thank you both, Leslie and Colin, for having this discussion and, ex and explaining what is behind DOT, this new family planning method. If anyone listening to our discussion has questions, please feel free to contact us at the email address on the screen. It is hello at dottheapp.com. You can also find further information on the website dottheapp.com. Uh, thank you again, Leslie and Colin, and goodbye for now. Thank you. Bye-bye. Goodbye.